back here. It's a hometown match up here in our top eight. Zan Said of Team Lotus Box from the Atlanta area. Robert Mendoza, also in the Atlanta area from Decatur, just east of the city. Imagine these two might know each other and play some. Yeah. Zan, of course, been putting up very good results on the tour here. He's on the play. Both players have kept, and we are going. Yes. This cracking of the fetch means we're all either going to have a Glistenerel for a Noble Hierarch, both great ways to start the game. Really nice to be informed that your opponent's on burn. Basic Forest, a relatively easy choice in this matchup. These are just joining us now. It's been an interesting tournament this weekend. Seven different decks in the top eight. Day two, no deck with more than four copies. So the format has been diverse, but it's also been very proactive. You look at our top eight, and we have seven proactive decks and then blue-white control. So we're going to see some quick magic. Oh, yeah. About what you expect from modern. Seven different proactive decks? Yep. There we go. Seven proactive decks, the format. <laughs> That's, uh, that, was the that was the working title. It was overextended, then it was seven proactive decks to the format. Now, you, today, we call it modern. Monastery Sister hits Zan down to 18. Now we go land, ground swell from Zan. We're going to pump that Glistener Elf up to 5-5. Five, five. Hit it in there, 5 poison under Robert. Yep, yeah, it's always good as the Infect player to get in that big damage when you know that it's going to connect, and he has the backup Ink yeah. Moth Nexus. Well, yeah, this could right, win, even win through a Searing Blaze. Robert could blaze. Zan could go land, activate, groundswell, kill you. Yep. Do you know that Zan at least has a second Ink Moth Nexus for lands in hand? If, if there is another thing like groundswell, he would be uh, possibly just off the green source for that. On our backup match, game one, complete Drake Sasser on Titan Shift takes game one over Houston Norton. That was pretty quick. <laughs> and uh, if that game's going to go quick, it's going to be going in Valakut's favor. Yeah, sometimes when you play that from the Valakut side, they don't cast any spells. Yeah. Because <laughs> they just draw removal, and they're like, okay, okay make some land drops. Yeah. Uh, path your Sakura Tribe Elder. Then we get to have a nice argument over whether I should sacrifice it or <laughs> let it get pathed. <laughs> that kind of argument that no one cares about. Right. No shortage of those on the magic scene. <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, they could play Tarmogoyf. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. Or could also <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the worst. And, uh, Robert missing a second land drop. Oh, okay. Just Hits on Zan the Swift again. Spear. Yeah, second Ink Moth for Zan. So now he has to figure out the safest way to walk this in. You definitely can just chip in with the Ink Moth that was already on the battlefield and the yeah. Glistener Elf. I kind of like that. He'll just attack Glistener Elf. And he'll Mutagenic Growth it. Robert bolts. Zan have another pump spell. That should do it. He's got to have something, right, with this yeah. attack? Yeah, another Mutagenic Growth. Right. That's five. That's, that's poisoned. Forget about it. <laughs> and we'll okay. comment it too. Whatever. Well, well, 11, 11 poison. 100 you. Go to 16 poison. <laughs> that means next game Robert starts at 6 poison. I think that's how that works. I believe so. It's a rule they recently it implemented. Yeah, they decided that Infect wasn't seeing enough play in tournaments. <laughs> and so they instituted this new poison handicap rule. So game one goes to Zan Sayed. That's the type of hand on the play that can really do a number. And I think it shows the play draw difference. Imagine... We have that, but Robert's on the play, and something like a Searing Blaze sticks. Different game. You need two lands to cast a Searing Blaze. Right. So I guess Robert doesn't have the second land. Yeah. But the fact that, you know, Zan being on the play got him those extra five points right off the bat. Yes. Yeah, being on the play, definitely a virtue in the matchup. No secret there. Sure. We look at the sideboards. Start with Robert Mendoza, now down a game. Three Destructive Revelry. Those could, in theory, hit Ink Moth Nexus, and could hit Iker Claw Mirrors. Yeah. We have uh, three Path to Exile. That one definitely plays. Your burn spells that uh, remove creatures, they can be dicey. It can be d difficult to actually execute with a Lightning Bolt. So Path to Exile is something that's a little bit easier to execute. I don't think I like Ensnaring Bridge. A lot of these creatures are just attacking with just one power before they start coming in. Yeah, I agree. Not going to do too much. Searing Blood is reasonable. It costs two mana, which is rough, but it is another thing that can actually interact. So in the main deck, we yeah. have some Skull Cracks. Those don't really play. You don't love Boros Charm in the matchup either. Yeah, so when I played um, Burn, what I like against Infect is that I start have make, making my deck all cards that remove a creature and deal damage, because right. Infect's actually Threat Light. So yeah, I think I do want the Searing Bloods here. Right. And some number of the revelries 
They, they yeah. just make sense. They hit Inkmoth Nexus. And remember, Zan's playing two Iker Clamiers in addition to the Inkmoth, so they're actually pretty live. I don't think Zan's going to board out any number of threats. Theoretically, you know, if he was going to board one out, it, it would be the mirror. It would be the mirror. It, it could happen. Yeah, we'll take a look at what Zan has in his sideboard anyway. Yeah, I guess if he wants to go a different line, he does have these four invisible stalkers. That seems a little much for the matchup. Two Viridian Corruptor, two Nature's Claim, two Spell Skite, two Graft Digger's Cage, two Spell Pierce, and one Wild Defiance. And this is a spot where the revelries definitely start to look better. One of Zan's better cards on the sideboard, those two Spell Skites. I like those. Yeah. Start eating burn spells, so having a clean answer to that. Actually, Wild Defiance probably comes in here as well. Oh, definitely. And that's another target. Yep. And then the, the two spells, the Spell Pierce, given how much of Robert's interaction costs two mana, yeah. you're pretty likely to have a good window for that one. How do you feel about Nature's Claim? It gains life, it stops Idle onto the Great Revel, but it's a little reactive for the matchup. There are situations where it can be quite good. I feel like the deck really wants a specific composition of things that doesn't contribute to any of it. You know, you want threat. You want answers. You don't really want to be blocking for your life total. You want to be blocking for your creatures. Nature's Claim doesn't really do any of the things you want to do. You're gaining life is well and good. Makes sense that you want to gain life against burns, just specifically because the deck is so heavy on creatures and pump spells and wants to be proactive. That's why I would leave Nature's Claim on the bench. Okay. Some updates from the field. Chad Harney and Adam Case going to game three, one game apiece. We actually have a first match result in, and it is a win for Primeval Titan, a strong 2-0 against Houston Norton. Drake Sather's in the semifinals. I said we had seven proactive decks and one reactive deck. Let's make it seven and zero. Yeah, seven proactive decks, the format. Back, back on it. So pumped around, right? It's been a while since Primeval Titan's won an open. Yeah, what, when was the last time? I don't know that it's happened. All I right. know it's, it's happened. I just, enough that I don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah. I haven't covered it. I know that I have covered Valakut decks in top eights of tournaments, but Absolutely. I can't remember the last time it happened. Just even a top eight. <laughs> hey, hey now. I'm just saying. It's a great deck. Now, this, this might be an indictment of my memory yeah. more so than the deck. <laughs> yeah, who, who's to say? But uh, yeah, yeah, Valakut has been on a downswing. A lot of your good matchups are starting to leave the format. He beat Blue White. That was his good, and you know he's actually good against Tron. Yeah, good against Tron. He's reasonable against Hollow One. Uh, we do see Infect and KZI in this top eight. He'd really like to dodge both those. Right. Those are miserable. Yeah, no thank you on those. I think why you see players move away from Titan Shift is that your matchups are pretty swingy. Uh, I played this at our the open we had in Minneapolis. And, you know, I got paired up against Green Red Land Destruction. I lost. Yeah. That yep. tracks. I believe that. I believe right. everything I really, you just yep, told me. We, we didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there is some of that. You know, the Infect matchup is feels very similar. Uh, your good matchups are, on the flip side, when you play a matchups based deck, uh, your good matchups, you know, I played Just Guy Control once. That was great. Yeah. I'd play that again. It gives you some room to make errors. Which is, which is why I like to pick it up. Right. Didn't really. I, I do like <laughs> Sasser. He, he's not only you know playing a strategy that hasn't shown up too much, he's also just not bothering with the recent updates. He's not playing Bloodbraid Elf. Or, yeah, so Bloodbraid Elf was the one update. He's also not playing Solemn Simulacrum. We've seen some of that. Uh, he's really the streamlined build of the deck. He has m extra main deck Sweltering Suns. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. He's and he has the extra land. Just hyper-focused on doing his thing. Has some interaction, not much. Doesn't have a backup plan. Not at all. It's Valakut. That's what we're doing. A lot of times, I'm, yeah. He doesn't have, sometimes you have a one, one of main deck Reclamation Sage just so that you can fight with Blood Moon. There's actually enough decks in the format that it's not too punishing. You know, sometimes you'll just draw it against Hollow One or Affinity or... Yeah. None of that here. He's just eight creatures. Four Tribe Elder, four Titan. All right, players drawing up their hands for game two. Sand's going to put his back. I'm, I'm all for aggressively mulliganing in this matchup. If you look at that last game, each player had at least four cards left in their hand when it ended. Yeah. Six card hand can be completely reasonable. It's a matchup where there's going to be battles in the stack. There's going to be fights to defend and to remove opposing creatures. But on top of that, you just need to be proactive the whole time because both decks can just win very quickly. Burn has some turn threes. Infect has some turn twos. So you need to be both pretty quick 
and able to fight these fights on the stack. You need to be able to respond to burn spells. So Zan is looking for multiple things in an opening hand. Which makes it hard to go to yeah. five, but justifiable to go to six pretty often. So post board, does this because of these cards like Destructive Revelry, Wild Defiance, do you, does the matchup slow down appreciably or just just a bit? It slows down some, but burn doesn't change enough where it stops threatening turn fours pretty easily. Y okay, we're not like we're never cutting the lava spikes. We're not. Yeah, I, I would assume no. I would be more inclined to be looking at two mana things. Skullcrack is the easiest cut in the main deck. It's that the one worst is one, yeah. flat out. Usually, you see Rift Bolt as the next one off. That one, I guess, can go at creatures. Yeah, that that one's pretty mopey, but it can be quite good. Goblin Guide in shows a blossoming defense. Zan will drop to 18. It's a good one to know about. Yeah. I just always assume my infect opponent has one of those. Fair enough. You usually do. Yeah. No, <laughs> You won't be wrong too often. Noble Hierarch from Zan said. Back to Robert. All right. Um, we're on our backup match. New backup match. <laughs> Tannen Grace takes game one over Thomas Mathers. Wow. If he pulls off that upset, Ryan, that's... If, if Tannen wins a tournament consecutively beating, taking Tron and beating Land Destruction, KCI, the winner of this, I don't care which one it is, they're both horrible <laughs> matchups for him. Right. Like, that's just destiny. Yeah. Yeah, putting up, making a really great run of it here. Goblin Guide came in and revealed another blossoming defense. Ooh, that's a... I, I like that card a lot. Uh, one's fine, two... I don't know. Now Robert makes Grim Lava Man, so that's just an excellent card against Infect. Yeah, yeah, that one makes things rough. Currently, no cards in Robert's graveyard, but uh, that that's not going to last. Never takes too long to turn a Lava Mancer live. Sam's going to need to get an Infect creature online, yeah. but he wants to be able to fight over potential spells in Robert's hand, and then also this Lava Mancer. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be really hard to do. I guess a Wild Defiance would take care of all of this if yeah. he had it. Otherwise, he can try to not play around it. I mean, Robert doesn't have any cards in the graveyard yet. Uh, it's not a not a line I like taking. Yeah, fetch land. Now there will be two cards in the graveyard for sure. Right. And Robert just shocked on the previous turn and had a mana unused. It it really sounds like feels like he has lightning bolt. To be fair, that bluff is relatively free. In fact, almost never is going to win the game with just regular damage. This is not a matchup where I would expect that to happen basically ever. Yeah, you see that sometimes in matchups against control decks where they're just, you know, fatal pushing your infectors and then you turn around and hit him with a hierarch. But yeah. not like this. An attack with goblin guide. Zan cracks a fetch land. All right, cracks a fetch land. Don't think there's too many instants he could have. He's going to get Dryad Arbor. Looks like he's going to try for a block pump to remove Goblin Guide. Yeah, that'll force some action. Well, it's some action. I mean, it could force the action of this Grim Lava Mancer. I don't know. This is going to be an interesting setup. All right, and there's the reveal Glistener Elf revealed off the Goblin Guide. Well, our overall one seed got another update here. Moving on, still only one loss in the tournament. Chad Harney on Hollow One defeats Adam Case two games to one. That, that's about right for my Hollow One versus Tron experience. Tron got one. Yep. Not two. They do sometimes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. I felt like he had enough game, enough play to get a game, but yep. the match probably not. Right. So, back to our game at hand. So we still see before blocks. We're going to, looks like our removal spell is going to be pointed. Lightning Bolt at the Dryad Arbor. Uh, or is this upstairs? I think it's upstairs. Ooh, okay. Setting up to activate the Lava Mancer. Uh, doesn't really make a huge deal. I believe that we're still before Declare Blockers. You know, part of me doesn't want to spend any of this burn on the Dryad Arbor. I kind of just want to, if he wants to use Blossoming Defense and kill the guide, I, 
I almost just want to let it happen. Well, I'll tell you what is definitely clear. Xan is trying to make you use a removal spell on the Dryad Arbor. Yeah. Now, what level is it? Is it level one? This is obvious. This is what I want. Yeah. Is it trying to make you think this is what I want? I, I believe that if this is just what you know, Xan wants you to hit the Dryad Arbor. Yeah. Trade your trade your burn spells with my Dryad Arbor sounds fine. I, I don't. I'm not buying it if I'm Robert. I'm just binning the Goblin Guide. I guess it depends on how much burn is left in his hand. There's a good argument for doing nothing. He's got a looks like a helix, a bolt, and a land. Yeah. So Xan at right now, a if all those you add those together, it's eight damage. I like this. Robert bins the goblin guide. Well yeah. played. So he would only he he could fight back, but then you just get the other defense, and then yeah, you're just out of stuff. I love it. Heads up move on Mendoza's part. Say it doesn't have a clock. Just, just hang out. This guy, this Grim Lava Mancer plus the top card of your deck, that'll finish it. Now, Zan drawing that Glistener Elf. He'd be exposing it to this Lava Mancer act activation, and Robert has the uh, Lightning Bolt in hand and the Lightning Helix. Can fire all kinds of stuff at that creature. Dryad Arbor will attack. And that's just one point of damage. Robert to 14. It takes a lot of cards to... Actually, two. Keep sure. Yeah, it takes a lot of cards to get in for just regular damage with Infect, but uh, Robert's life total relatively low. He's at 13. So you go, Robert. Um, we'll see if he sends this Lava Mancer at the Glistener Elf or at Xan. It's going to go upstairs. Xan to 10. And it looks like then he'll bolt him down to 7. He still has Lightning Helix plus Lava Mancer up on the following turn. Yeah, he doesn't need too much more. He can, he can hang back, see if Xan commits something, if he does fight over it. If not, then it just takes one more card to go into the graveyard, and you'll be able to Helix, Lava Mancer, Lava Mancer, and that's lethal. All right, Robert to Eidolon of the Great Revel. I'm pretty into cast this right now, Ryan. Robert goes to 11. I don't think, how is Xan going to kill you with pump spells if Eidolon's in play? Makes it a lot harder. Yeah, Zan's already at seven. You yeah. don't get too many spells from that spot. The uh, Lava Mancer alone puts Zan at a virtual five. He's going to Helix Zan to four. Looks like not going for the Eidolon. I think he's casting that after the Helix, and that means Zan can only cast one spell. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Debating if he wants to hold back activation or cast Eidolon. It's yeah. a choice. I, I think I like the Eidolon more, like you were saying. One spell. I don't see how we die in one turn on with one spell. The fear would be Xan having a sideboard nature's claim in hand. Okay, well, he'd still go to two, right? Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to win on the following turn. The question is, do you necessarily oh, have a following block? turn? Yeah. If he just attacks the Glistener Elf, you don't really want to chump your Lava Mancer, but you don't want to die. Right. That's fair. Well, I don't think the Great Rebel's in play. Now we're going to, to see if Xan has that nature's claim. We do know that he has a fistful of spells. There right. no land drop last turn. There are claims in his sideboard. Tapping for something. It's probably nature's claim. So there's not a lot that he can do at the end step. I don't think it's blossoming defense on Glistener Elf. This is in response putting cards in the graveyard for a Oh, okay. Immense. Sure. Makes sense. Makes sense, but it's not lethal. Even if he has a Become Immense. Become Immense plus another pump spell would be, though. Okay. Because he has the Exalted trigger. Looks like he has Mutagenic Growths as some of the pump spells, and you actually can't cast those for zero anymore. <laughs> Here is Glistener Elf exalting to a 2-2. Two -two. So, Muta, whoa, man, with three mana. Yeah, Mutagenic plus Become Immense would do it. Yeah. I think that Xan was setting up to top deck the Become Immense. I'm, I'm not sure that's in his hand. We'll find out. Right. The, other, the other thing Xan gets to do is he kind of gets to check for remembering Eidolon triggers. Yeah.
like Robert asked for some Become Immense Oracle text. I think on that last turn, Ryan, I like a different sequence from Robert. I think I like playing Eidolon and leaving up mana. Then on this attack, you chump away the Eidolon, shoot Xan to five with Malavomancer, untap and burn for five. That way, you can't brick anymore. Yeah. Now, Glistener Elf trades with the Eidolon. We go back, Xan replaces Glistener Elf. And he burns off the top, wins it for Robert. A land, and he has another turn to survive. Right. He has enough fuel if the Lava Master goes upstairs twice, if he's able to execute mm -hmm. on that. Just says go. Looks like it was a land. And now we have to ask whether or not Robert will block when Xan attacks. Something like a Searing Blood would be an unfortunate top deck, as we know Xan still hanging out. Or, oh, you can't, that was the card he threw. It was... Uh, Blossoming Defense. I guess we don't know about it, but he does have Vines in hand. Well, he had two Blossoming Defenses, right? We saw the guides reveal he two. He had one on Goblin Guide, one there to oh, build the right. uh, Become Immense. Okay, he threw the one away. Well, not threw it away. He put it there for Become Immense. Right. Yeah, he could have uh, baited or tossed the card, uh, done Vines instead of de Defense. Don't know if that's going to make any difference in this game. play here. Likely going to be to chip in with the Glistener Elf. Maybe he has lethal, maybe he doesn't. Wild Defiance from Xan. Okay, well that means if the Lava Master is going to go out of creature, it has to happen now. Yeah, that forces the action. Xan may have found a way to win this. Hold on. He has at least one Vines of Vastwood in hand. Uh, yeah. He has mutagenic growth as well. But if... What happens, Ryan, if, Zan, if Ryan Robert just says no blocks? Xan can't get to 10 poison here, can he? Not... I, as far as I know, not in a way that does not cause the Lava Mancer to go upstairs and win the game. Well, if he fetches... Hold on, if he fetches... No, this works. If he has if a Become Immense. Become Immense, yeah. Just one Become Immense, so does he, it? If he does have the Become Immense... Okay. Yeah, well, I don't we'll, know that Robert we'll, we'll can beat out. Become Immense anymore now well, that Defiance is in play. The Lav Mancer doesn't do it. So Robert's choices are to s check him on Become Immense or to, to to block and hope to top deck a burn spell. I mean, he has sideboard deflecting palms. Maybe I the, think there's not a ton of cards that brick in this situation. I think we saw no blocks, Ryan. Hold on. Is this the Become Immense to win? I mean, everything else loses. It's Vines. Now Zan's just hoping, hey, you got a target. Yeah, I think he's trying to force an error here. Yeah. Yeah, he wants Robert to target the Glistener Elf. Right. Don't do that. You'll lose if you do that. If you target Zan, you win. Right. Maybe he doesn't play against Wild Defiance. It's, it's a line. He's hoping to draw an error here. Robert's right. just got to stay on target. And Robert's reading the Wild Defiance, so that, that should <laughs> that's a, that's a good, not that's, a good sign for Zan. That is bad for Zan. All right, two. Oh, he's, he's shooting the Glistener. He oh, shot the... Oh, no, he no. messed it up. He just shot the wait. Glistener Elf, and then Zan pumps it with Mutagenic Growth. He, it worked. He, he baited in the mistake, and it paid off. Wow. Well played by Zan Sayed. That is an incredible. Zan Sayed finding victory on a board where he had lost. 